Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this placemat. I really love it. It's called Winter Skies. I do want to let you know this is a sponsored video. This year, for 2021, I was chosen as an Island Boutique Ambassador. I'm so excited, and this is our first project. As an Island Boutique Ambassador, not only did I get all of these gorgeous fabrics, I got some other goodies as well. I did do an unboxing video if you want to take a look at that at some time. Uh, but um, the thread that I got is from Aurafil, and it is the color I used for this, which was perfect, is eggplant. And the batting I used was Hobbs 8020, and it was black batting, and that worked out really well. It's a nice uh, weight for these placemats. And then I also use Schmetz needles uh, in my machine for this. And as always, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. Thank you so much. And I am on social media at Create with Claudia, uh, where you can see all sorts of things, projects I'm working on, sneak peeks of projects. And don't forget, this pattern is available for free on my website, www.createwithclaudia.com. And there's a downloadable PDF, which, uh, which you can print out, and that's perfect if you want to save it for a later date. And there's also a tutorial on my website. So thanks so much for stopping by and enjoy the video. So here again is the placemat that we're making today. This is just one of them. We'll, I'm only going to show you how to make one of them. You can make as many or as few as you want. Over on the website, my pattern does show you how to make four of them. It has the cutting and uh, the fabric requirements to make four of them. But today we're just going to make the one. It would take way too long to make all four. But the, uh, the placemat measures 20 inches by 15 inches. Uh, all of the fabrics in this placemat are from Island Batik, and the purples are from their stash builders. Uh, they're just a various amount. I have four different purples in here, and each one I think is prettier than the next. Um, so that's that, and the gray is from their solids line, so it's a solid batik, which was really nice to work with, and um, I think it adds a little bit of softness, excuse me, softness to this pattern. Um, but now I'm going to show you how much we need to make one of these placemats. So I'm going to leave this here maybe so you can I can reference back. So for cutting for this one placemat, you're going to need the following. And I'm going to start with the gray, which I consider the background. It's this part here and then that corner square there. You're going to need the following. You're going to need two rectangles cut four and a half inches by nine and a half inches. You're going to need eight squares cut two inches by two inches. That's eight of those. Two squares cut four and a half inches, and then four squares cut three and seven eighths inches. So that's for your gray, okay? For the next part, which is this pale purple, so this corner unit, and then here this uh, center, you don't need a lot of that. You need the following you're going to need four squares cut one and a half inches by one and a half inches and then two squares cut three and a half inches. So those are those. From fabric C, which is this dark purple, not the binding, but this uh, stripe here and then that part right there. That's a dark purple. You need the following. You need eight rectangles cut two inches by three and a half inches. And then for that outside border, you're going to need two strips cut one and a half inches by 13 and a half inches, and that's for the short ends. And then you need a little bit longer, and that will be one and a half inches by 18 and a half inches, and you need two strips of those. So two strips cut one and a half inches by 18 and a half inches. I'm just going to put those like that so you can see it. And last but not least is the purple, this medium purple, which is sort of borders the inside of that square. And for that, which is fabric D, you need the following. You need eight squares cut two and three eighths inches, and eight squares cut two and a half inches. Hopefully you can see all that. Um, but that's what you need to cut. That's to make one placemat. So if you're making four, you multiply it by four. Or if you want just two uh, placemats, you can do that too. Another option, and I would be really easy, instead, if you don't want a placemat, you can make a table runner. Just make two of them and then sew them together on this long end. But uh, the January challenge for the Island Batik Ambassadors was to make placemats, and that's what I did. So let's get started assembling this gorgeous uh, placemat. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make these flying geese units, and that's that little section right in here, just right, that little part right there. So to do that, we're going to need the two four and a half inch squares of background fabric, or fabric A, that gray in my case, 
And then you're going to need eight of your two and a half inch squares of fabric D. So that's that pale purple in my case. And the next thing you want to do is you're going to draw a line, diagonal line, on the back of each piece of your fabric D square, that two and a half inch square. That's going to be your uh, sewing guide. So I'm going to do that. I get my ruler and a pencil. Uh, I don't normally use pencil, but it shows up uh, better on, on the camera. And what I'm going to do is do that on all eight of them. And when I come back, I will have done that, and I'll show you how to keep assembling this uh, flying geese unit. Okay, so I have here are my two four and a half inch squares, and then here are all those eight inch squares I drew that line on the diagonal line on the back of. So you're going to take one of your four and a half inch squares, excuse me, and you're going to place them right sides, these two fabrics, right sides together, and you're going to put this in one corner. This is a nice quick way to make four flying geese out of one, uh, just a couple pieces of fabric. So you just want to make sure that lines up perfectly and that diagonal line that I drew is um, going this way. And it looks pretty accurate. And then you're going to take another one and you're going to put it in this corner. And hopefully there you go. See how that line, that that um, the sewing line just lines up nicely all straight across. What you're going to do is you're going to sew down a quarter inch. Let me get my pencil to point. A quarter inch on each side of that line, that drawn line. And I'm going to do that. And you're going to do that with this four and a half inch square and two more of the two and a half inch squares as well. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Okay, so here we go. I've done both of them. There's, you see the I used a lighter thread just so you could see it. I normally would use a more, probably a gray thread to, to blend it in. Um, but I drew, I sewed down each side a quarter inch on each side of that drawn line. And now I'm going to split these in two. My ruler. And you're going to split it on that line that you drew earlier. That's where you want to cut. So you're going to get that. And then you're going to split this one as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to take these over to my pressing surface and press them open like so. So here's the first part of making these flying geese. So you get four that look like this, and I'll just lay them out real quickly like so. And like I said, they look like spaceships to me. And then you're going to take the four remaining squares, uh, the two and a half inch squares of fabric D that we used uh, earlier, and you're going to add one to each of these like so. Let me move these out of the way. Again, right sides facing. This time you want that line that we drew. Let me get a different square. You can see it better. I'm gonna line it up in this corner. And you can see you want that line that we drew earlier. Let me find my pencil. Straight down there, like so. And again, you're gonna sew on each side a quarter inch down each side of that drawn line. So I'm gonna do that on all four of those units and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so you can see here where I've sewn down uh, each of the sides of this uh, drawn line, like so, quarter inch on each side. And again, like we did before, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and ruler and I'm going to cut on the drawn line and split this unit in half. Just like so. So it's almost like, and I, if you've ever watched my other videos, you know that whenever I make flying geese, um, they're like magic to me. I don't know why. You just take those few squares and it turns out you get these cute, uh, cute flying geese. So let me finish that and then I'm going to press them open and then we'll move on to the next section. Alrighty, so here are my flying geese all pressed. Now the last thing you need to do, and then we'll be done with this unit, is we need to trim them down. And we need to trim them down to two inches by three and a half inches. And uh, let me show you how you do that. You're going to take your ruler and you want to have a quarter inch seam allowance here if you can get it. So you're going to take your quarter inch on your ruler and just line it up with that point. That way you get it as accurate as you can. And then you're going to try and make sure it's uh, lined up on this. It, it won't line up exactly. I, the the, the uh, flying geese, the measurements I give you, give you a little bit of wiggle room so you can trim them down, which I, I like to do. Not everybody likes to do that, but that's why you have to trim them down. So there's your quarter inch seam allowance there, and it's fairly lined up there. And then you're going to take your ruler, I mean, excuse me, your, your uh, uh, rotary cutter, I can't speak today, and just trim off that edge right there like so. 
and then you're going to take your two inches right here and you're going to line it up on that edge you just cut and then you're going to trim off the bottom without wiggling that ruler too much see there's just a little bit of extra so that's your two inches and then you're going to do three and a half across now half of three and a half is one and three quarters and that's where you want to put your uh, ruler your 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 ruler point which is right here there's my one and three quarters inch and you're going to line it up with that bottom line that makes a nice line let me see like so and then you're going to just cut off that edge flip it around and now you're going to find your three and a half inch uh, marker line up along that bottom again that's always a nice indicator and I just double check there's my one and three quarters inch measurement and then I'm just going to trim off that side all right so there is your flying geese unit two inches by three and a half ready to go so the next part we're going to do is this corner square right here maybe you can see it a little bit better right in here right in here is what we're going to be doing this little part here so for that section you're going to need the following for fabric a you're going to need four of them that were cut three and seven eighths and that's fabric a the gray background uh, continuing with the gray fabric a you need eight of your two inch squares so eight of those squares four of those and lastly you're going to need that fabric D which was that sort of medium purple and you need eight of your squares that were cut two and three eighths inches okay so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take all eight of those squares and you're going to cut each one on the diagonal like so and you're just going to repeat that with the rest of those squares and set them aside and then you're going to take your larger square, which was the uh, fabric A, that gray background that was me that measured three and seven eighths, and you're going to cut that on the diagonal as well. Just one time, cut it on the diagonal. Like so. So in the end, you're going to end up with eight larger triangles once I cut them all, and 16 of the smaller purple ones. Okay, so once you have all of those triangles cut, you're going to need to assemble these corner squares, and then you need those squares. What you're going to do is you're going to take one square, the first part is you're going to assemble it like so, and two of the triangles of those purple triangles you just cut. And I'm just going to show you how it gets laid out. It's going to be like so, and then you're going to put one of those triangles there. So you're going to sew this section first, this, this smaller section first, and then piece that on it later. So the first thing we want to do is sew these, uh, this for all of the corners. So you're going to add one, I call it a wing, to this end and one to this side. Again, using that quarter inch, uh, scant quarter inch seam allowance. And then press it open, and then I'll show you what they all look like when I come back. Okay, so I have added those purple triangles to the uh, corner, this one corner of those gray squares, and I did that so you're going to have eight units that look like this, and you'll probably want to go ahead, or you will want to go ahead, and trim off those little dog ears right there, and then what you do after you trim those off, I set those aside, so you're going to add one of your triangles, so, and it'll, like, like so, and hopefully they fit if your seam allowance was it should be pretty much on the money and then you'll just sew and then my tip for this is sorry I'm trying to line it up really carefully it's a little short but that's okay it'll it'll be fine uh, when you're sewing your quarter inch seam allowance you definitely want to sew right up at or a little bit outside or towards the top of that point um, excuse me that that point where those two seams join that'll give you a nice uh, crisp corner there so I'm going to do that on all, all eight of these, and I'll show you the finished corner for the for the block for this placemat. All right, so here are those square uh, uh, the squares for those blocks that I'm making for the placemat. This is what they end up looking like, and you should have eight of them. So we're going to set those aside, and we have one more step to go, and then we're ready to assemble the block part of the uh, placemat. 
So for the final part of this block, you're going to need two units. You're going to need the, the, the excuse me. You're going to need the flying geese you made earlier, and th that measure two inches by three and a half. And then you'll need those dark purple. Well, not whatever color you're using. The rectangles of fabric C that were cut two inches by three and a half. And all you're going to do for each of these, and there are eight of them, is you're going to right sides together. Whoops! If you can hold them, <laughs> right sides together. Line them up. And then using your scant quarter inch, you're just going to sew along uh, along that line for each of them. And you want to have that point, the the arrow or the arrow part of the geese, f pointing into the uh, dark or to the this uh, to this rectangle, like so. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. And then we can finally assemble the block part of this uh, placemat, and then it, we won't be much longer to to assemble the whole thing. Alrighty, so here are my eight uh, units that I made using the, the uh, rectangle and the flying geese unit that I made earlier. And now we're ready to assemble these blocks. So you're going to need one of the, actually, you're going to need four of those to make one block. And then you're going to need these corner squares that we made with the gray square sort of pointing towards the inside of the, of the block. And you're going to need, when you're done, you're going to have two of these, uh, two of these blocks. And last but not least, you need that center piece, which was fabric B, so like so. And then you're going to assemble it like you would any other block. You're going to sew together the rows, like uh, individual parts of the row together first, and then you'll sew all three rows together. So I'm going to do that, and when I'm done, I'll have two blocks that look, um, let me show you, like, like that. So you're going to need two of those. Okay, so here are my two blocks for this one placemat. I have squared them up to nine and a half inches. That's what they should measure. And now we are ready to finally assemble the entire pla <laughs> placemat. I know sometimes these little steps take a little bit longer. So I'm actually going to bring it over. Let me show you first off. You're going to add one of these rectangles to the ends of each of these blocks like so. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then show you how to sew the rest together. All right, so these have been pressed open. I'm going to alternate them so they're sort of on opposite sides, and then I'm going to piece them together, joining them right sides together, like so, and then sew along this line, and then we'll have the center of the placemat. All right, so here's your center of the placemat. The next thing we need to do are add those borders, and that's really easy to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to add the long ones to the top and the bottom of the long side, like so. And once we do that, then we add these shorter ones. And let me move this a little bit so you can see it. You're going to add the shorter one, but you're also going to add, don't forget we have those little corner squares, like so. So you're going to add those two to this shorter strip, the one that's, um, that's one and a half by 13 and a half inches. You're going to add those first. And then we're ready to finish, finally finish. <laughs> it, it seems like it's forever. I tell you, when I make a video, I have to stop and start a lot. So it seems a lot longer. Uh, but once it's edited, it's nice and short for you guys. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you the finished um, top. Alrighty, here is my finished top for the placemat. It measures 15 by 20, and now all I have to do is put the backing on and the binding, and then quilt it, or quilt it before I put the binding on, excuse me. Um, I really like the way this turned out. This could easily, if you don't want to make placemats, this could easily be a little wall hanging. I think it would be really pretty, done in all sorts of different colors. It's a lot of fun, and there is a lot of sort of uh, blank space or negative space where you could show off your quilting skills, your machine quilting skills, or hand quilting skills for that matter. So let me show you the finished one as well. Here it is. And here it is quilted. It's all ready to go, ready to put on my table. I have, this is, um, I made four of them for our family. All right, I'm back. What did you think about the placemat? I really like the way it turned out. It's my Winter Skies placemat. This is just one of them. Over on my website, I have the fabric requirements if you want to make four of them. But like I said earlier, this could easily be a little wall hanging too if you wanted to do that as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay on top of everything that I'm doing, all of the fun projects that I have going on. And I am on social media at Create with Claudia. So thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day.